Hi, my name is Craig Frazier and this is... Artem. Artem is Spray Gardener. Yes, and we're here in the beautiful studios of Createx Colors in Granby, Connecticut, something like that. Anyway, we're going to do something kind of cool here. Artem brought us this electric unicycle. I'm not sure what yeah. the brand it is, but uh, it doesn't matter because it is now this a spray gunner unicycle. As you look at it, he's got a, he's got a couple of scuffs on the one side, from, but uh, right now he's got a sticker on here and it's just white, Covers basically a factory paint job. What we're going to do is we're going to have uh, my son Simon is going to take this all apart while he nervously watches and we're going <laughs> to prep all these panels and uh, sand them down, hit it with some sealer and probably use a silver sealer and I think we're going to go with a biomechanical style, like a yeah. Giger-esque style. Just freehand airbrushing. We are going to, I'm going to have Artem come back in and uh, using his um, plotter cutter, he's going to plot out and uh, cut the logo spray gun and we're going to incorporate into the paint job. And uh, he said he wanted a little bit of orange in there, so I mean, we're gonna, 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 gonna uh, yeah, I have a little bit of orange. So we're gonna put some <laughs> orange in that, and that's pretty much it. Did I did I miss anything? You didn't miss anything. I was just gonna say it's my opportunity to finally get one of the Fraser's work because I almost wanted a piece of your art. Oh, thank I you. couldn't buy any one you liked because they were somewhere in the museum or other guys got them. So here's my chance to get it directly from uh, Fraser. And this this unicycle can be sold. First of all, I'm a motorcycle guy, okay. And I went to this 48 state troop where I mean a tour we at right now. I couldn't take my motorcycle cycle with me, so I start experimenting and uh, ended up with And this, this thing will do like 31 miles an it's hour. Over, yeah, it's over we're gonna, miles. At the end of this video, we're going to have a video of him riding it. Because so, yes. as soon as it's painted, only him's right. He's not, no one else is allowed to ride it but him after not, that. Not even thinking about it. I but guess, no. uh, now I was going to ask you, do you want to go with the gloss clear on this or do you want to go with the matte? Definitely gloss, no. Definitely let's, gloss? Let's okay, gloss, cool. Yeah. So we're going to have, a, a, when it's all said and done, probably, uh, you're a clear coat guy, probably have you do the clear coating. I can do clear coat. You can, can do the clear coat. Coating. Yeah, we'll uh, see. Well, mm -hmm. you guys can fight over it. So anyway, yeah. uh, we're going to have Simon tear this thing apart. And the next thing you're going to see is us with it all prepped. And uh, we're going to start doing some airbrushing on it. And that's about it. So yeah. I will see you Let's when we're ready. Let's roll with it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Russian joke. Good. Yeah. Funny. Yeah. Uh -huh. Da. Okay, you basically, well, Simon got the whole thing torn apart, yep. and then yep. you came in and uh, you didn't have to do a lot of prep on it. So basically, yeah. would you just sand it with 400? We did a little, actually 320. 320, okay. 320 on a DA, fine orbit DA, a little bit of uh, scuff paste, because it's plastic to get the edges on a red scotch right? That's like that toothpaste kind of consistency prepping paste. Uh, rinse it off in water. Give it a wipe down, tacked off, and ready to spray. Now, normally, if I was going to be spraying this with a normal automotive, like a solvent-based base coat, mm -hmm. I'd be having to come in and put a, a sealer down, yes. like a primer. Yep. Yep. In this situation, uh, this is just raw plastic. We don't yep. realize this, this. This color that's on here is actually the, the, the color of the, the plastic, color plastic itself yep. in the mold. Yep. So you're not going to you're you're putting a sealer down, yes. but it actually is a colored sealer in yes. this situation. Yep. So what are you going to be putting on this? Uh, we actually chose gray. Uh, our silver sealer is, is what I was going to recommend, but Craig doesn't want it to be super glittery. And if you guys know the the new version of our silver sealer, the six hundred one three, is really the old bright. silver sealer the been perfect silver for sealer, it. Yeah. But the new stuff is literally like Pimpadelic Low Rider. Oh, it's, it's Low Rider. It's, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's yeah. badass, but. I, I, I don't think Giger and anything biomechanical is going to be flying on anything really sparkly, but I did yeah. want a little bit of metallic in yep. there. So yep. you're going to go ahead and use the gray sealer. And Two then coats of gray for the ground coat, and yeah. then we'll do just maybe like a coat and a half of the medium aluminum, which is one of the components in the, the flake size yeah. is the same as what's in the silver sealer, but it just isn't going to have that crazy pop. It'll be, it'll still have a nice metallic look mm -hmm. to it, but it'll be a little bit more muted than our silver sealer. Now, uh, it should be okay. I, I've airbrushed directly on top of silver sealer in the past. That mm -hmm. shouldn't be any issue. Do, yeah. Would you recommend putting a UVLS on top of that before I do my artwork? Or there should be no problem whatsoever? Actually, I'm going to be doing a little bit of masking. Yeah. Remember, Artem's going to yeah. do do the, the spray gunner logo in right. vinyl. So there's right. going to be a little bit on there, but I don't think there's going to be any issue on lifting. No, because I mean, this is such a small amount of spraying that I'm not worried about metallic stacking and getting yeah. kind of dry and these are going to be easy to spray and, and again I actually mixed uh, 40 50 in with that medium mm -hmm. aluminum so at, at a four to one ratio so it's four parts uh, aluminum to one part 40 50 so that's going to help kind of lay down and kind of level out a little bit too as well so this is on a full-size vehicle or a yeah. motorcycle where you have large areas and if you're doing a lot of masking yes and masking, graphics yeah. you definitely want to make sure you put a code of the uvls yeah. uh i would say probably the 40 too. 50 yeah. 40 50 put, put it yeah. on top and to lock in the silver because even just a little bit of that silver lifting with the tape you can see it even through candy yeah in this situation we're in the, the biomechanical style is kind of dirty enough on its own that it, it, honestly you can have some serious issues and <laughs> make it part of the design so so I'm going to go ahead and get out of the booth and let you yep. uh, get to spraying. So, right. good luck. Thank you. All right, guys, welcome back. I have two coats of our Sealer Gray. 
over all the plastic that we're gonna spray. I let that dry actually about a half an hour because I'm gonna top coat it with this aluminum. Uh, and what I wanted to do is just, I went lightly back over it with a little bit of 600 just to scuff out any dust nibs or any kind of imperfections that we saw, just to make sure it's really nice and clean and slick because Craig is gonna be doing our work over this. We want this to be as smooth as possible. So I have my medium aluminum mixed up Four to one, so four parts aluminum to one part 4050, about 10% reduction, 4011 reducer, and uh, I'm gonna do probably like a coat and a half. I call it a half a coat. It's basically just gonna be a kind of a drop coat, just to give a nice little effect to these parts. So this is what that looks like. Okay, uh, we're back, and if you noticed, uh, Chris Arvin did a very nice job of uh, spraying the silver on this. It's nice, been drying overnight. Yep. I always like having it sit overnight just because that's absolute. I mean, I believe the, f the exact curing time on this, what's fully cured, is 48 hours. Uh, you can work with it, tape on it, mask on it, do work within like a few hours of painting it, no problem. But if you really want to lock it down, and I'm going to be doing some masking on it, and I may be doing some rubbing and wiping and redoing of some of my artwork. So I figured, hey, might as well, it was the end of the day anyway, let it sit overnight. Now, this is the top of the, like it's a little fender cover, the handle that actually holds the bike. Yep. It goes right in there. So to exactly. give you an idea of how the parts fit on, there's a little rubber mm -hmm. grommet that's about a quarter of an inch. But this piece sits here. Now, mm -hmm. I don't need to worry about this piece being affiliated with the design as much. This sits like this back it's here itself, yep. on it. And so the wheels are kind of right in the middle. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna do some biomechanical, kind of freestyle artwork all over it. And uh, we're gonna actually create a logo. And it yeah. is, we're gonna take this spray gunner logo that he cut out for me really quick. Uh, yeah, I did most of the cool. design already. Yeah, it's you did design, but you had it. I mean, he, he's got his motorhome outside, and it's like, oh, do you have, didn't bring your plotter cut. Oh, yes, I have it with me. Everything's there. It's like fully automated. So we got him to cut that out. I'm going to apply this to both sides, probably do it right in here. And uh, you can do it right now. You wanna, let's grab this and hold and line it up here. Mm -hmm. I can't really do it in front of the camera, but I'll do it, and I'll show you after I lay it down. I'm going to put it right like that. Kind of like the way that was laid in there. And then just peel back the transfer tape. And then we've got the positive of spray gutter. Now, I'm gonna come in and actually create a border around this that follows a little bit of this curve right here. And I'll do something a little bit different with it than what he had on there already. But what I really wanted was that as a positive. This will stay silver as I do airbrushing around it. I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing to the other side. And then I'm gonna start uh, airbrushing. We had talked about doing uh, just some biomechanics. It's all gonna be very monochromatic, but I will include, we'll figure out a way to put some orange in here. I'm thinking I'll make this opening here and I'm gonna put some orange candy right around. It doesn't this. have to be bright, spray on orange. You can do like the dirty kind of look. Could you, yeah. yeah it's, well, you it's can, there's, there's already a, a gold amber uh, anodizing yeah, on, on the uh, suspension. So, right, exactly, something uh, we'll, similar. We'll get something a little bit kind of in between this and that mm. color. And I'll do it just in this one area around the number, the letters. So I'll leave the letters masked off, so they'll stay bright silver. And the area around here will have a little bit of that dirtier yeah, orange. And exactly. Then, and then uh, as a little, little tribute to, to, to Kennedy here and his, and his dad, we're going to do the character, the Vinnie character, our little logo for Craytex is going to be right in here. And so this is kind of like the back, you know, the headlights here, tail lights here. So we'll have Vinnie hanging out there with a spray gun in his hand. It'll be kind of kind of cool looking yeah, right there. Unfortunately, I said no to, to skulls. I'm not a big fan of skulls and nothing really just there, just, you know, I like living things more. And uh, I know we're going to throw, you know, tomatoes maybe because the skulls are the industry standard, but yeah, we're going to do the... No, it's, so, it's okay. He doesn't want skulls. It, every, everyone has their own, you know, he is bigger than me. I'm not going to make fun of his skulls <laughs> and he has a frightening accent. So it's, not, it's like when someone turns around and says like this, no skulls, it's like, oh, you've seen too many. Oh, so <laughs> no, no problem, no skulls. But we can still have fun with biomechanical. And uh, Giger didn't always have skulls in his work. And don't worry, I won't put any of the other things that Giger puts in his biomechanical. Okay. So uh, it'll be child friendly as well. So uh, we're gonna, uh, I'll start working on this. And uh, when I'm halfway through, we'll have you come in and, and see if you're liking it. And then uh, in which case that's cool. And if you don't, then it's like too bad. Um, but. <laughs>
<laughs> Sounds good. Yeah, that would be the first one, you know, the customers are like, what the hell is this, man? Yeah, I want to <laughs> be different. It's, yeah, it's uh, good for it. No, no, trust me, I have a lot of customers that don't like, that want the skulls. Uh, anything else you want on it? Is that, that about no, it? No, go for it. I mean, I don't want to limit the artist of your level, so just, uh, yeah, buy mechanical, some orange, go cool. for it. Okay, well, well I'm going to get, I lay the other one out, and I'm going to do a little bit of concept sketching, and then uh, show you how I do that, and then we're going to start painting. Yeah, I'll stay out of your way. Sweet. So, see you later. Okay. Okay, we're back here and uh, I went ahead and laid the spray gunner on both of these panels for Artem and I decided to do a little, a little graphic around it. I remember he said he wanted some orange on here so I got a hold of some Grabber Orange Candy 2 and I decided, yeah, I'm not going to do just one here. I did one with a little bit of a mimic graphic under below it and then did the exact same thing on the other side. Uh, just to make sure there's only orange on that one part, I want to have it maybe throughout the whole area. So I did another on the back piece that sits like this on the bike. I did a long graphic here and then make a short on this side to kind of emphasize the asymmetrical airbrush I'm going to be doing anyway uh, with the biomechanical. So this is all masked up. I used just some uh, FBS green eighth inch tape here. It's vinyl. Uh, remember I talked earlier, uh, I already talked in other videos about how I'm making sure you're using uh, vinyl tape instead of crepe tape when working water base. If you do work with crepe tape, be very, very careful not to get it too wet because it will creep underneath there. But vinyl will keep it from creeping. And then the FBS Gold, I really love using this tape. Now, we didn't put a clear coat on this. This is just the silver from last night, uh, the medium silver, and uh, didn't really need it. Now, if this was a sanded clear and it was solvent-based clear, I would wait at least 24 hours before using gold tape because if it's still gassing out solvent, it can affect this gold tape. It can transfer some glue behind it. It gets a little bit on the, the glue gets kind of gummy. So that's something to be careful with on gold tape, uh, on solvent-based paints. Now on any of the clear, uh, the, are there any of the water-based UVLS clears that Kratex makes? There's no issue whatsoever. This tape, you can go on very, matter of fact, I can actually mask Candy 2.0 uh, with any tape faster than a solvent-based candy. Uh, just because it literally is cured enough to mask on, whereas solvent-based candies, even when they're fully cured and you mask directly on them, they usually have very, very low adhesion characteristics. So one of the, one of the bonuses on Candy 2.0 on this. So this is all masked off. I didn't mask off this because I'm not putting any orange on this. I'm going to sit it out of the way so I get no overspray on it. If I was really concerned about overspray on the back of these panels, which I'm not, um, I'm not spraying this with a full-size gun. I'm going to spray the Candy 2.0 Grabber Orange with an airbrush. Now, why would I do that and not use a gun? Uh, if this is a graphic on a full-size vehicle, I would purposely use a spray gun with a fan pattern. But in this case, I do have some airbrushing that's gonna be going on the inside of this. Besides the orange, I'm gonna have some, some dark uh, black candy I'm gonna put in there for some effects. And even if it doesn't look perfect, it'll actually match okay. The airbrush can spray candies very evenly in small areas. You can't spray them very evenly in large areas because the fan pattern, there isn't a fan pattern, it sprays in a cone. Something to always keep in mind. Now, when mixing up the candy, and you've seen me do this before, but I will do it again. Uh, get a little cup here. I've got my 4050. If I was doing this on a canvas, I would use 4030. Uh, for automotive, 4050 uh, UVLS gloss clear is my go to for adhesion. Promoter, also my go to as a binder. So I'm going to go ahead and pour a little bit of this in here. And I'm going to go with a 30% by vinyl, making a lot of it because I don't need a lot. I'm going to go with 30% candy to this uh, UVLS clear. And oh, it'll give it a good shake. There's a ball in there for. Not, it's not just so you can have fun listening to it. It's not a rhythm toy. It's actually there for a purpose. And yeah, I know I'm eyeballing. Sue me. Um, that's how I roll. Uh, if it was a larger, I could actually go by gradations. Yes, of course. When you're making large uh, quantities, you want to be really specific. Also, something to think about, when you're working with um, uh, candies in a large size gun, it is a little bit more uh, specific where you want to have less candy and more of the UVLS for large spray applications. With the airbrush, you can go even down to 50-50. That's a lot of candy, but you're going to be spraying it much quicker. Now, when I mix this, am I going to add a reducer to it? Yes, I'll add a little bit of 4011. That's all I use nowadays is 4011. It's all you need to use. And I'm not going to use a lot of it. Now, you, say, you could turn around and say, man, this is so thin, it doesn't even need any 4011. Um, I, I like a little bit of 4011. It makes it actually spray better, in my opinion. It kind of helps in the cross-linking, too. I might be wrong on that, but we're talking, that's like not even 5%. That might be 2.5%. Just a little bit is all I need. And what's the one rule of thumb I always say? Once you stir it up really good and you add the 411. By the way, did you notice I added the 411 after I mixed in the UVLS and the candy? What you don't want to do is don't take your candy and mix it with 411. 
The reason being is 411 is a very mild um, reducer, but it does have some polyglycol alcohol in it. It does have a, a solvent in it, and it can actually shock the candy. So I always mix my candy and my UVLS. As a matter of fact, if you mix candy and UVLS together, it's not reactive. It's fine. It's not going to go anywhere. You add a little bit of that 4011 into it, it'll start, it'll start to go off slowly. I mean, granted, it might take up to a week, but it's still, uh, it starts ticking. And once you mix it up, like I say with everything from full-size spray guns to airbrushes, let it sit for 15 minutes. For full-size spray guns, this makes a gigantic uh, difference in how it sprays overall, how it sprays, how it lays out, transfer efficiency, even less modeling. Uh, and then for airbrush, or for microns even, very, very important uh, for the airbrush, it will allow you to be, do better details. It literally feels like a different paint. Uh, 15 minutes is all it takes. And no, once you do it, if you add more reducer later, you don't need to wait another 15 minutes. It's a one-time deal. So. Uh, a lot of times I'll mix a paint up if I know I have 15 more minutes of, of masking over here. You can incorporate. Once you get used to it, it becomes very normal. Otherwise, some people say, oh my God, I don't have 15 minutes in the day. Yeah, but do you have a couple hours of sanding and redoing something completely? Mm -hmm. Yeah, think about it. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and use my, um, I'll just do it right now. I've got my uh, Clips CS right here. It's emptied out. And I'm going to go ahead and pour this in here. You didn't wait 15 minutes. I know. It's a video. It's like a cooking show. Come on, guys. I'm not doing high details right now. By the way, what's the difference? Is it majorly structural? No, it's not. It's more, it's more aesthetic, more visual. Now, I'm going to be very careful on this. I've got to drop my pressure down a little bit. i got this really honking. You may wonder, what am I using in a CS? What, what pressure? I usually like between 30 to 40. In this case, I'm dropping it down a little bit closer to 30. So let me come in here. And I'm going to go ahead, normally I'd have this booth going, I'm wearing a mask, I'm doing a very small amount of volume right here, and if I had the booth going, it'd be a lot of me doing, you wouldn't hear a single word I said, it's just the way life is, a lot of white noise for you guys. So I'm going to come in and very lightly spray this orange in here for two reasons. Uh, it's water-based, I don't want it to bead up on the surface if I get it too wet. And uh, I'm not sure how much I love this color. So I want to see, I mean, on this cell, I want to see how it's looking. I'm kind of digging it. I'm also thinking the color is very, I want it to be very similar to Spray Gunner's orange. It's not a really bright orange, but it's also not a dull orange either. And he's got a really cool anodizing that is on his uh, scooter already on the suspension. That's actually kind of more closer to gold. So I wanted this to be in between what that vinyl was. You know, very, very coincidental, Spray Gunner's vinyl is orange, so that's very, very, very color coordinated, Artemis. So I'm gonna hit the ends, because you might see those, you might not, but hey, it doesn't hurt any to be precise. And as much as I'm being careful here, you know, I got no overspray flowing around back there, so I'm not gonna worry about that being ugly with overspray. There's not even silver back there, it's all just white. So I did a little bit more color at the top than the bottom, that's fine. I kind of wanted to be a little bit of a blend there. I want to kind of, I'm going to showcase a little bit of a shadow on the top anyway, so the candy kind of helps that. It's still drying. I'm going to let that dry on its own. I don't need to air dry everything. Now, on figuring out what side is going to be darker, I need to know what side is up and down. Well, I do know that the pointy long part is the downside. So I just remembered that from keeping track of it. I'm going to do the same thing on this piece. Come in and lightly hit the whole thing, hit it with some air. A little bit darker, a little bit wetter. Hit it with air, always hit it with air. Do not use heat, I've said it before. It is not, heat is not your friend. You know, make sure your booth is not freezing, but do not apply heat directly to the paint. It doesn't dry the paint properly. And some people think it does, it doesn't. Just, you don't use a heat gun, don't use a, a, a hair dryer. Don't even get, you know, you just get an air blower. Or you got one in your hand, it's a freaking airbrush. There you go. Backside a little bit more of that, not much, not much, and let that dry. So let's grab this one, do the exact same thing. I always want to go over, make sure everything's pressed down. Sometimes it'll lift it a little bit. You got a little bit of humidity in here. A little bit's not bad. I always tell people, no humidity is bad. Too much humidity, bad. It's a Goldilocks thing. You want to be right in the middle. Just right. And do the exact same thing. I know the top of the Spray Gunner logo is darker than the rest. So I hit the whole thing, hit it with some air, dried it in a little bit more candy on the top. Not much, a little bit more. On the bottom. 
I had a little bit of a spit. I had, I had something else in this airbrush earlier and it kind of came out right there. Am I tripping? No, I'm gonna come in with some airbrushing and do some black candy in there anyway. So I'm not using it as a gross rationalization, like, oh, I made a mistake, don't worry about it. I make mistakes all the time. You know, there's an old running joke that a good painter, when he makes a mistake, fixes it and the client never knows. A uh, great painter makes a mistake and charges more. So turn it into something else, make it better. Anyone can fix something, but you can make something better, that, that, that makes a big difference. I'm gonna spray air on this, it's really wet. I don't want it to stop modeling. If you're not careful, if you put something down when it's really wet, it can start to pull. It may not run, but it may pull a little bit and create what's called a sag. And when you're doing that with candy, that, that's bad because clear you can barely notice it, but candy, the sag will have a dark line on it because the candy will migrate in the direction of the sag. So I wanna make sure I'm not getting any sags going on here, nothing here. These were both pretty, they were wet, but they weren't super wet. Still gonna dry them. You can use an air blower if you want, uh, besides, I'm just using the air, I had the airbrush here and the air blower is way over there. I'm not gonna go grab it. And this is not a gigantic area, so the airbrush is working just fine drying it. Now, what would I, what, how soon would I unmask this? Well, as soon as it is dry to the touch, I can unmask it. I actually recommend you unmask it while it's dry to the touch and not completely dry for two reasons. When it's dry to the touch, but still not quite, you know, if you press it's still soft, when you unmask it, that edge will, will bend a little bit and become softer. If you wait until it's absolutely dry and you unmask it, sometimes it can create shards and make a little bit of a rough edge. Sometimes, that's if you had the paint really, really thick. Uh, how soon would I wait before I masked on top of this? I would say if you're gonna do masking on top of this candy, give yourself one hour. And make sure you leave the booth running or put a fan, even if you don't wanna leave the booth running, just get a fan. A little like $10 fan just sitting, blowing across the surface is all you need to hyper dry. I mean, literally, you say, oh, it's just gonna speed it up a little bit. No, I'm not, it, it will speed it up like three to four times faster. It will dry with that fan and it'll dry better. And so put a fan on it, let it sit for an hour, and you can mask on it all you want after that. Uh, all of these colors, all the Createx color lines, do cure within a 48 hour window. Um, now that doesn't mean after 48 hours you have to sand them, they're no good, nothing will stick to them again. But that is their ultimate toughness. If you're gonna be doing erasing techniques or blending techniques where you wanna reactivate the can, you wanna do that within the 48 hour window because after that, it's kind of cross-linked, it's pretty tough. But the cool thing about these paints is they don't really have this fixed window you have to operate within. Uh, whereas in the, above that window, you've gotta completely redo the paint if you wanna do anything on it. They still stay open enough that their paint will stick, their own paint, Creatix will stick to itself. So I'm gonna go ahead and let these sit uh, for about probably 15 to 20 minutes. I'm not masking directly on them. I am gonna be doing some airbrushing directly on top of this and I don't wanna work on the top of a wet surface. So I'm gonna blow some more air on it, let these dry, and then come back and we'll start doing some of the biomechanical artwork. Okie dokie, I've got this uh, orange all nice and uh, dry and it's been sitting for about maybe 20 minutes and I went, went over, made sure it was good and dry so I can actually paint and touch on it. We're gonna mix up some candy black and uh, it's gonna be a little bit of a different candy black mixture. What I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna use my standard 4050 and we're gonna go with that 30%, uh, you know, 30% of the candy to the, to the actual uh, UVLS clear. Oh, we shake up the candy black real good. And I'm not worried about that as much as I want to add a little bit of the opaque black. Now the reason I want to add the opaque black in here is not just for coverage, I want to tint a little bit of it. Uh, the opaque black has a little bit of a sepia black. It's not, doesn't look like, by comparison to the candy black, it is more sepia. And the sepia will actually complement the orange a little bit. Plus, I want a little bit more coverage. So just a little bit, not a lot. A little bit of that opaque black in there, and then give it a good stir. And I'll look at it on the side of the cup. I always like having a little bit of light coming in because I can see the transparency on the sticks, one thing, but I can see the color change on the side of the cup. And I can see just a little bit of that. I need a little bit more candy black. Not much. And then I'm going to put in about maybe. That's 5% reducer. And what did I say before? 15 minutes. Let it sit. You can even load your gun up and then just let the, it sit in the gun for 15 minutes. It doesn't matter. As long as it sits for 15 minutes, gets it nice and acclimated. I could always do this ahead of time, but I like doing it on camera. Because guess what the biggest complaint or question I get? 
How do you mix up your paint? What ratio do you use? Do you really wait 15 minutes? <laughs> No problem. Now, if I was working with a full-size spray gun, would I strain this? That's another question I get. Yes. I strain my paint. Do I strain it for the airbrush? No. Which sounds funny because you could say, the airbrush is small. You need to strain it more for the airbrush. True. Uh, but it's a little bit more inconvenient for small amounts to use a large strainer. Half the time, the large strainer will absorb as much paint as I'm even going to use. With the full-size spray gun, the straining is very important because over a large swath of area, you'll see that little chunk. With an airbrush, the little chunk ain't gonna spray, so it sticks in the airbrush. With the spray gun, it just throws it on the surface. That's why you wanna strain for a big gun. Okie dokie, uh, I went ahead and let my uh, candy black sit for a little bit, and I was playing within the airbrush, and I was flicking around the airbrush and trying it out, and I accidentally got some paint on here. This is shows, this is a good example on do not splatter paint on your artwork. Now, even though this is dry, if I put clear on this first and then I splattered, I could have wiped it off. It happens, so I'm gonna go ahead and show you what happens if you accidentally splatter paint on your design. I was gonna do this anyway, and I'm not just saying that. I was gonna come in and splatter black anyway over all of this because this biomechanical stuff always looks better if there's distress. So you see that little black? Now, how am I doing that? I'm pulling the trigger back on the airbrush without any air, and it loads up the needle with paint. It only works on a gravity feed airbrush. If you have a siphon feed airbrush, like a bottle feed, it, doesn't, it works a little bit on the side feed, not as well. I will do this again later on once this is all unmasked, but I'm just doing that just to create a little bit of texture. Now, another thing I'm gonna do is make sure that's dry, because if you don't, it'll shoot across like a little race car. So if you zoom in on this, you can see I'm gonna come in and uh, since this is Artem's spray gunner's piece, um, I, he gave me uh, one of his airbrushes to play with right here. So I've got the PS771 airbrush, which is their detail model, and I'm playing around with it, and I've got my candy black, and it's spraying very nice. And I'm gonna do a real subtle drop shadow on this lead edge right here. Now I know this is the bottom. It sits like this, so I'm thinking the light's up above, so the drop shadow would be, always keep, in, keep track of where your drop shadows are by comparison to everything else in your design. And then I'm going to come around, same kind of drop shadow there. I will go all the way around a little bit just to add some separation there. And then I'm going to create a drop shadow just below to the side of these letters. Just to create some separation. When I unmask them, they'll have some depth to them. I don't want it to be real, real 3D, just a little bit, just a little bit of depth. I'm not being real precise with this. I'll even come over and kind of add some stuff here and there. And then I'm gonna come in and add just some interesting biomechanical stuff. So I'm just gonna come in and add some what I call sketching, some like tubing or plumbing, which you'll have like little designs, like I'll come in here and And this is very, anyone that knows the Giger's biomechanical stuff, you'd always have little weird tubes and stuff. Like, looks like, like a circuitry or plumbing. A couple lines behind the spray gunner, maybe bring that line off. Do the same thing here on this one. We are very hot inside this room. No matter what airbrush you're going to use, you're going to get some tip dry. So a little tip dry on this paint from the room. We're probably about 80 degrees in here with the lights. And without the booth moving, we have no air motion. So heat affects Graytex adversely. You always want to make sure you be careful with too much heat. 
Now this looks kind of sloppy. When it's unmasked, it's going to have a really cool look, especially compared to all the other biomechanical stuff I'll be doing around the rest of it. So that's pretty much the way I'm going to do the rest of the pieces. I'm going to get them all done, and then I'm going to unmask all the stuff, and then start doing all the biomechanical work in the background on the silver itself.